Hi there. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Matthew Johnson, and I am the pastor here at Glencoe United Methodist Church, and welcome to worship. I am both thankful and blessed that you have decided to join us for worship today. And though we've already worshiped this morning in person, we, we thought it was important that we share with you this opportunity online to worship with us. So no matter where you are, no matter what time it is, no matter what you're wearing, no matter what you're doing, now is an opportunity that you can join us in worshiping the Lord our God. Now, if you would like to learn more about us here at Glencoe, our church, you can visit our website at www.glencoeumc.org or the description below. And if you would like to keep up with all the ministry opportunities that we got going on here at the church, feel free to like, comment, follow, subscribe on our social media platforms. You can see them on the screen now. And... If you would like to be on our email list to kind of keep up with what's happening, prayer requests, and all that good stuff, as well as the worship service will be emailed out every Sunday, then go to the description below and sign up at the link. Now, friends, with all of this in mind, let us now enter into a time of worship together. Will you pray with me? Merciful and gracious God, we come before you today back in your house so we can worship your holy name, so we can study your word, so we can understand what you have to tell us today. But Lord, as we go through these rocky times in our lives, whether it's due to COVID, due to illness or loss of loved ones or friends, whether it's seeing others hurting, whether it's seeing children getting behind, Lord, we ask that you intercede. We ask that you come and be with us. We ask that you come and help those in need. We, help, we ask that you come and comfort those. We ask for your healing touch. We ask for your grace and your mercy at this time, O oh God. As we worship together this day, help us to always remember you in all that we do. Help us to not uh, be given for granted all the blessings in our lives that you have given us. Because of God, you give so much to us. Lord, we are thankful for you. And we are thankful your son, Jesus, who is the biggest blessing that has been ever given to humanity. And it is in your son, Jesus' name, that we pray this day. Amen.
friends. Gracious and merciful God, we are currently going through a major storm that is this pandemic, but we are also dealing with the storms in our own lives. These storms affect us in many ways. They affect us emotionally, physically, and sometimes even spiritually with you, O oh God. Be with us during these storms. Help us to ride out the storms. Help us to be faithful and remain true to you. Help us to keep the faith even in the hardest and darkest of times. O oh Lord, as we come together today, we lift up different names to you. Some of the praises of new life, some the praises of spending time with others, but like children, but then there are some that are dealing with illness, dealing with loss, dealing with sickness. And oh God, please be with those. Be with them all. Help them feel your comfort and your peace. Give them your warm embrace on the cold, dark nights. Help them feel your presence at all times, no matter how hard things will get. Take them by the hand and reassure them that everything will be okay, that you are there with them and that there is still hope for the future. Even if we as human beings do not know what that future looks like. Oh Lord, thank you for the blessings of everyone in this room and the fellowship that we have together for the community that we have together for all of the good that we do for each other and also for those around us. Oh God, this is an important request that you ask us to love you, O oh God, and to love our neighbors. And each day of our lives, we try to do just that. Some days we fall short more than others, but some days we, try, we are more successful. Help us to be more successful on a regular basis. Help us to be more loving on a regular basis. Help us to love you and, and praise you regularly. Help us to always turn to you in our times and our hours of need. Help us to always seek you out, no matter what. O oh God, we come before you today as your faithful servants and we lift up all these names to you. And we also have names on our hearts and on our minds that we, maybe we didn't mention, maybe because they didn't come up right now, or maybe we just didn't want to say anything for another reason. And that is OK, O oh God, because you hear all of our thoughts and, our, and all that is on our hearts because you, O oh God, care about your people. You care about your children and you love us all. Thank you, O oh God, for the many blessings in this room and for the many blessings that will continue to come out of the, the loving people in this room. But most of all, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for his sacrifice. Thank you for his love. And thank you, O oh God, for all that you continue to give us in our hours of need. Lord, we ask all these things through your son, who is the Christ. Amen. Pray with me as we bless the offering this day. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, before you are our gifts of offerings and tithes this day. May they be used for the transformation of this world into a kingdom that you would be proud of. May they be multiplied and used for your will and your will alone. May we also continue to offer up ourselves other than these offerings and tithes. Always to you. Offering ourselves to whatever your will would have have us do whatever you would have us be and to be your loving, faithful disciples each and every day. Lord, we ask all this through your son, Jesus Christ, and all of his people said, Amen. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the gospel of St. Luke, chapter 8, verses 22 through 25. Hear now the word of God. One day he got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they put out and while they were sailing, he fell asleep and a windstorm swept down on the lake and the boat was filling with water and they were in danger. They went to him and woke him up shouting, master, master, we are perishing. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves and they seized, and there was a calm. He said to them, where is your faith? 
They were afraid and amazed and said to one another, Who then is this that he commands even the winds and the water? And they obey him. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Growing up, one thing that I was always afraid of was the dark. Still don't like the dark if I can help it, but what are you going to do? Darkness comes at night, most nights, and it's especially dark whenever there are clouds to cover the moon and the stars. The other night I was sitting outside and I was noticing how clear the sky was, how bright the stars were. I saw all these different constellations. It was really nice. I was looking at Orion's belt, the Big Dipper, and others, and I was just enjoying the majesty of God's creation out in the universe. I was, I was just enjoying all that God had to offer, just looking up into the sky. And as you know, oftentimes, eclipses come about. And they're a majesty to see, aren't they? They're really neat. Have you ever looked at an eclipse? Have you ever seen one actually happen? They're really cool. When I was in seminary, there was a big eclipse, and we went outside of the, of the, of the building that I was in, and we were all looking... We were waiting because they said you're not supposed to look without glasses on, first off. But secondly, they were saying, wait until a certain point to look and you will see the true eclipse. And so we were waiting. But you could notice how bright it was and how dark it was getting just in those moments. It was absolutely stunning. I had never actually took the time to, to pay attention to an eclipse other than seeing it on TV from previous times, or in movies. And it reminded me of how quickly storms come and go. And when the storm comes, things get dark, do they not? It's amazing. When I, I used to go with a friend to West Virginia, and I would be with him at his cabin, him and his family, and I don't know if you know much about West Virginia, but you think North Carolina storms come and go quick? West Virginia, they come and go quick. We were standing outside one minute, not a cloud in the sky. Next thing you know, it was almost nighttime feeling. And you look up, and if we had not ran for cover, we would have been doused with rain. I tell you what, that storm was so violent, and it was so quick, and it was gone in 20 minutes. It came, and it went. Unfortunately, though, sometimes storms come... And they don't go. They sit and sit and sit. And what seemed like it would be a sunny day or the day before was such a sunny day, a bright day became such a dark one. A lot of folks don't like this time of year during the winter. Why? Because it's gloomier. It's not as bright as normal. And I can't blame them. But, as you all know, I'm never going to pass down an opportunity for snow. Hopefully we'll get some today. Knock on wood. But the reality is, is when times get dark in our lives, it affects us. It affects us greatly. The eclipsing darkness that comes about in our lives, whether it's due to an actual storm or otherwise can really have an impact on our daily lives, on our emotional state, on our spiritual lives. Oftentimes, these dark, these dark eclipsing moments, some of them that last a long time and some of them that are very brief, they come at the most inopportune times. I was spending time with my grandmother recently, and I knew that the end was near. But I was trying to remember the things that we used to do together. I was trying to put light in those dark times in my life. Unfortunately, I feel like it did not help. And oftentimes that is the case, is it not? 
you face a dark time in your life and you try to lighten things up and it, what it ends up doing is making things worse. I can't tell you how many times Lindsay was in a bad mood because she had a bad day or something and I go in there and I try to lighten the mood and she's like, no, that's not helpful. I remember the last night with my grandmother, I read this book to her. You may be wondering, well, why did you read a book to her? Well, she reads these inspirational uh, romance kind of books. It says on the back, uplifting stories, faith, forgiveness, and hope. And I brought some to the church for the church to have if you want them or to read them. Because she had them all throughout her house. <laughs> but she started reading this before she got sick. And then she couldn't read it anymore. And so the last night I thought, well, I'm going to bring some light to the, to the room by reading this to her. <clears throat> she wasn't speaking. She wasn't responding or anything like that. But they say that the last thing to go is your hearing. So I thought, do this. And now I'm keeping the book because I got to know how it ends. <laughs> I'm not joking. It's like a Hallmark movie in a book. When it talks about uh, young Sam's chocolate eyes. <laughs> I'm just saying, friends. God knows our pain. God feels our pain. And if you remember, after Jesus was killed, after he died, there was an eclipse. There was darkness that covered Remember that when Moses was trying to get the Israelites out of Egypt, there was darkness that covered the land. Darkness can come into our lives, and most of the time I have found, as hard as I try to push against it, as hard as I try to deny it, sitting in the darkness is the best thing. Thinking about God in those moments. Feeling God's presence in those moments. Not trying to cover them up with something bright. Not trying to illuminate where there does not need to be an illumination. Oftentimes we try to distract ourselves during difficult times, during our storms in our lives. Do we not? How often do you think about that? How often do you actually experience something bad in your life or troublesome in your life and you think to yourself, I'm going to do something to distract myself. I'm going to go to work. I'm going to preach a sermon on Sunday. Sound familiar? I'm going to go to work. I'm going to spend time with family. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do anything I can but sit in the darkness. Because it's hard, is it not? It is hard. But let me tell you a secret. God is always with us during the hard times. God is always bringing forth light into our lives, even when we don't see it. Like an eclipse, there is still light in existence. And more light will come eventually. Like a storm. The clouds will pass and the, and the moon will come back or the sun will come out again. God sits with us during these times. God told the disciples after he died, he came to them and said, peace be with you. Remember, they were hiding behind closed doors, locked doors, because they were afraid. They were having a dark moment in their life, the darkest moment, arguably, in their life. And Jesus came to them. And said, peace be with you. The reality of life is that when we weather the storms, we're dealing with this kind of situation of where darkness comes about. When the windstorm came, when they were on the boat crossing the lake, I bet you money it got dark before that storm hit. Or as it was hitting. I imagine how dangerous it was. I imagine how the waves and the winds were 
affecting the boat, how it was hitting it back and forth. But what makes it even harder is when it's darker and it's harder to see. When I was younger, we had a, we had a pet deer. I know that sounds weird, but we did. Dad was cutting, um, I think it was, I think it was barley or something. And he ran across a deer and he brought it home. We named him Buddy. He's a cute little deer. We kept him in the barn out back. And I remember having to go feed this, this deer. Rain or shine, storm or not. And there was a real bad storm one night, and I did not want to go out there. I did not. It was thunder and lightning, pouring down rain. The wind was blowing so hard, I was nearly picking me up off the ground. And when it wasn't lightning, you couldn't see anything. But my mama said, you got to feed that deer. You wanted to take care of it. You've got to feed it. So I worked my way out there. Scared the crap out of me. Scared the ever-living daylights out of me. But I recognized that I had to go through the darkness because that was something that had to be done. The lessons that had to be learned in that darkness. They say Jesus is light, and yes, this is true. And Jesus shines through us. But sometimes, because of these storms, the light can be dim. It can feel like that light is not as bright as it was before. <coughs> <clears throat> but here's a secret, friends. That light is never extinguished. There is never true darkness because God is always with us. God is always there with us and never forsaken us. And in the darkest valleys that we walk through, in the toughest storms that we deal with, Jesus is always there to help guide us and keep us safe. For God will not forsake us. For God will never, ever leave us. I don't know what storms you have in, had in your life or are going through. But when it gets dark, it's okay to sit in that darkness. When it gets dark, it's okay to pray. And feel God's presence. Because in those moments you will feel God's presence more than ever. Because in those moments, you will be vulnerable to God. When everything is going right, it seems so easy to say, praise God. <clears throat> but as the eclipsed darkness comes, it is harder to do that. I want to just tell you this, friends. God wants us to praise Him, no matter what no matter what's going on in our lives. And that is hard to do sometimes. Speaking from experience. Speaking from experience. But guess what? We praise God not because we're happy, but because we have hope for the future. Because we know that God sits there with us in the pain and the suffering. Because God loves us enough to not leave us alone, even when we try to push God away. You can push anyone in the world away from you, family, friends, your pastor, anyone. But you cannot push God away because God is always there with you. That I promise you. That is what I leave you this day with. That is what I leave you with today. When the darkness comes, God is with you. When the darkness leaves, God is with you. The darkness is not the end all be all. God is. Amen.
After the storm, there is a calmness. The light comes. It does not leave permanently. And it never leaves completely. Like I said, I do not know what storms you are facing in your life right now necessarily. But remember that. Storms come and go. And we have to get through it as best as we can. Thanks be to God that God is with us during those times. Let us have the faith to think of God, to pray to God, to depend on God during those times. And not try to take control ourselves. For as we know, we are terrible when it comes to taking control of situations, are we not? Whereas God God always knows what the best thing is, even when we do not. Please stand as you are able for the benediction this day. As you go from this place today, remember that the darkness will pass. Remember that God is with you in that darkness and that God will never leave you. God will always be that light in your life and you will you will have God on your side forevermore. May the hope of God sustain you during these difficult times. And may you be filled with the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God that you are here. And thanks be to God that you are his faithful servants. Go in peace. Serve the Lord always. Always give thanks and glory to God. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.